Recently I was looking at a hundred year old walk up with Zach Shardak, architect. Zach Shardak, architect, modeling houses and this sweater. He's a real handsome guy. I wanted to find out what legal, preferential and economic reasons prevented us from building this sort of desirable density these days. And I was sure I was about to hear a whole bunch of legal requirements related to accessibility. I was not disappointed. The thing that really sticks out when I look at this building is there's really no barrier free access to it whatsoever. As part three building, you'd need to supply some barrier free access to people who are lesser abled. That's something we couldn't have if this building was built today. We'd have to have some barrier-free units on the ground floor of this building. Aha! There we go, big government. Making sure that a ground floor unit in a large building has a ramp. Yeah, unfortunately, as Zach and I went through the building, I became increasingly saddened that I wasn't going to be able to blame the housing affordability crisis on the elderly and disabled. <laughs> Next time, diabetics. In my province, buildings with over eight units and two floors are subject to these barrier-free provisions. And these laws are actually kind of surprisingly universal around the Western world. There's basically always some version of like, if the building's this size, you gotta do these things to make sure that disabled people can live in them. But in every place I've looked at, that doesn't have to be every unit. It's usually just some proportion of them. And for a building this size in my city, you can meet those requirements by just making the ground floor units accessible. And it's really not that big a deal, even on those units. If this unit were a barrier-free unit, uh, you'd have to allow for the turning of a wheelchair. You need a variety of grab bars, uh, not only next to the toilet, but also in the shower. Safety stuff wasn't really to blame for increased construction costs either. Perhaps the spacing between the uh, the pickets on the uh, on the balconies might be too large. You're allowed a maximum diameter of 100 millimeters, so that hypothetically an infant's head couldn't pass through. So putting a ramp up to the ground floor and changing the spacings on bars so that like some stupid kid can't put their head in there. You know, I was promised a libertarian feast of inefficient government bullshit on wheels. When it comes to trying to rebuild a building like this today, many of the inefficiencies that we have are actually related to preferences. It's the changes in these norms that have changed the cost of building this building. Modern North Americans are not going to tolerate what your great grandmother would. She put up with having eight children and not being able to vote. An extra flight of stairs is just not on her radar. On the more sensible side, Elevators make a building more expensive and they remove floor space. So why are they so often in a building of this size? Well, I turn to the smartest, coolest, and most capable of clicking on a survey people that I know. It's you, it's audience. I asked, what would you pay for a nearby two bedroom, four floor condo with all the modern amenities that you'd expect? An elevator, in-suite laundry, balcony, sprinklers. And then I asked what difference removing certain things would make on the price people would pay. And people knocked 10.3% off the price of that four floor unit if it didn't have an elevator. So if the condo costs say $400,000, removing the elevator would knock $41,000 off each of those four floor units. Now elevators are not the exotic and expensive luxury that they once were. Cost of install, operation and safety are all vastly improved on what existed when this building was first constructed. I mean, they used to have that little you know, button pushing door closing man in there. These days, all you'll find is passive aggressive notes from people that live in the condo. It doesn't take long for a developer to be losing money by not having an elevator. They really are surprisingly cheap. When they put an elevator in, all the units in a building can be sold for more. The top floor units become the most valuable in the building. Surprisingly, sprinklers also fit in this category a lot of the time for buildings of this size. It provides like a lot of peace of mind, right? And in case of an emergency, in case perhaps you can't escape your unit, no one wants a repeat of the Grenfell Tower catastrophe. Functional sprinklers would really, really have gone a long way. Like elevators, there is a base requirement for them, but people's preferences are ahead of the regulations. We and our insurance companies are already looking for them before we legally need them. So I checked what Zach said. What was it worth to my audience to not have their pets and priceless art burn up in a fire? Even in a four floor condo, which is pretty safe, people knocked 10.9% off the price if it didn't have sprinklers. 
That's $43,000 per unit in our $400,000 condo. Once you add the reduced cost for insurance, the market is already pushing developers to put in sprinklers before regulations have impacted the building. Another thing that would change if this was constructed today is in-suite laundry. No requirement for in-suite laundry. It's a great feature to add and you can legitimately increase your rent if you provide uh, at the very least the rough in. Zach was right, but it wasn't actually as extreme as the others. Respondents knocked 7.3% or $29,000 off the price if they had to share a laundry. So it takes away some floor space and it adds the cost of ducting and wiring, but developers know it's usually worth it these days. At first I thought people had misunderstood the question, but then I did remember staying in a building where um, people did the laundry at night. Night wash, keep your neighbors awake. Maybe for some people a centralized place for the noise was preferred or just having a laundry room where you can blow all your loads at once. Then there's the weirdest preference which has huge financial impacts and uh, I would never have guessed it. I don't know what it is, like it's, it's something I, like I just can't quite put my finger on but it seems like most new developments, if not all, have balconies, right? We have sort of struggled to integrate them into the building aesthetically, you know? A lot of buildings in Canadian cities are like a box, but they're dressed up with random balcony patterns. You see them all the time, everywhere, like the balcony is dictating the public face of the building. Private balconies are the norm now. So the hybrid balcony slash emergency exit that you see here is usually replaced by a separate emergency exit system and it's really fucking expensive. So why do we do it? I'm not really sure what it is. I suspect that Canadians hold their outdoor space very dearly, but in, in a sort of privatized form. And in other societies, your balcony is in your outdoor space. The common outdoors is the outdoor space. What's crazy is the balcony being common had the largest impact in my survey, 12.4% or $49,000 off the price. In the survey, people already had one private balcony and they want to spend $50,000 more so they can have a second private balcony. I mean, what? I don't know what the fuck is wrong with people. It's like a year of work. A year of work so that you can have fruity Shiraz on your second private balcony with some other colleague from Dumb Fuck Incorporated. Just, just go to the park. Most of these changes and norms have happened because the price of equipment or installation has gone down. Take a washing machine. Like elevators, it was a new invention when that building was built. But now only hippies and people living in a hotel room in China while they're having a quarter life crisis hand wash their laundry. <laughs> Maybe in 1900 it would have cost 20% of the value of a home to get that cutting edge washing machine technology. Elevators were like this too. Elevators 100 years ago were effectively a monopoly with the Otis company dominating the market and they were expensive and unreliable and really only worth it in a high rise. But you know, if washing machines and elevators were still as expensive as the 432, the simplest, handsomest, and most perfect washing machine ever produced, which cost just six months of labor at Daniel Schmidt's self sealing stem bolt factory, then people wouldn't expect a washing machine. But these days, a washing machine costs very little, so they want a place to plug it in. It's a bit like a garage in suburbia. You know, once cars got cheap, people started expecting a garage so they could park the car. When a developer goes to build a building, sure, they could save $5,000 per unit by not having the two plugs and duct and a bit of space for a washer and dryer, but you're probably gonna knock several times that off the price of the unit. What's interesting to me about all of this is that we often blame the government for increasing the cost of building by over-regulating and requiring these excessive things that aren't really necessary. And then on the other hand, a lot of people blame developers for building these luxury condos. But the truth is, a lot of the reason that these prices are higher than they need to be is down to us. So much of our new housing stock coming online has these additional amenities, not because the government's requiring it or Developers are shoving it down our throats because we're going, nah, you know what, like, uh, yeah, I would like a rooftop pool. They're making the decision, I will pay a little bit more for a place that has something that you might think is a luxury and stupid. Almost all multifamily buildings built these days have a few things that you can put in the luxury category. Because simply put, your average North American lives with a level of abundance unimaginable to your great grandmother when she was born. And we don't want that same great-grandmother 
to be walking up four flights of stairs with a bag of laundry only to burn to death in a fire. It's not governments or developers that decide what unnecessary things we choose to buy. It is us. What was it worth to my audience not to have their pets and priceless art burn up in a fire? Can you believe this? Terrible custodian of my art upstairs. When a developer goes to build a unit, oh sure, they could... S when a developer goes to build a unit, sure, they... Oh my god. When a developer goes to build a unit... When a developer goes to build a unit, oh sure. When a developer goes to unit... <sighs> fuck no. When a develop... <sighs> when a developer goes... To when a developer goes to build a unit... Ah, yeah. When a developer, when a developer goes to build a unit, sure, they could save 5,000 fucking unit. <laughs> when a developer goes to build a building, 